face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up, guys? Of course, as always, welcome back to another Smogren Tier Change video. And yeah, this is a video where we talk about the tier changes and what could happen to the meta due to the changes in mind. That said, though, this time, these changes in September were really, really, really broad, where a lot of Pokemon's dropping in usage, and of course, a shift in Switch Swim and just Rain overall know you really redefined how you you look like now due to these changes in mind. So, with that said, we're gonna go over first a quick pass because there were actually a few quick pass directly, and these were out of response to very, very caliber high viability mods that, while not used as often, really, really can break asunder. Well, you you inhab. So with that said, a few of these are being tested, but as stated, they're a quick ban and not used for ladder at the moment. So a quick round about the quick bans is that um, Galadite in Yu Yu and Heracrossite got banned directly. Um, Hoopa get a suspects test, but the other two will begin immediately just to suspect test, and Hoopa is going to have to wait because at the moment it's not going to be tested. So Galade and Heracross will be tested in UU but most likely banned because they are tremendous threats. Heracross primarily. Heracross was a Pokemon that got banned in Sun and Moon. Its viability is not necessarily been revoked or become worse and since then. It's actually just on par really and still is a very good overall response to the rain team going on definitely against the likes of Swampert. So I, I can see the why it has been dropping in usage but it's far from bad. Uh, so that's a quick run on there, and then on the RU side, Mega Absol and Saigarde 10% are being quick banned, and Saigarde 10% are being suspect tested later this week. And uh, yeah, Saigarde 10% might be enough um, to actually break us under the team. While I would like to see Saigarde 10% in RU, mainly because of a few really ferocious mons there that definitely could have used a better ground type, but even though Flygon just fared the job okay. I really want to see Saigar dead too. That said though, I understand the reasoning why the reason it isn't used as often in UU's primary physical score is, well, serving a better role I would say. While a banded Saigard or Scarf does do really fairly, it is still kind of um, half ass mon compared to Gliscor, who has a better defensive typing and also just more for overall for the team being a very strong defensive response. So. Yeah, I can see them being both viable. The reason it's being dropped is because Gliscor is slightly better and works better in team overall than Saigar 10% is doing. So with that said, let's go over the tier changes that has been made. So I'll do this unscripted, so bear with me if I'm kinda talking out of my ass some time to time because I don't know too much about the RU shift, if anything. OU I do know a bit too much about. All your shift here is at How Lucha, who watch, which was BL, Nine Tails Dragonite, which was BL, Manaphy, which was BL, and Kingdra, who is RU, has been moved to OU. Now, a quick rundown there, of course, is that the reason How Lucha is being used more often is because of the electric seed combination, or any seeds basically to terrain activating the far, far, really scary Umburden. By terrain, this is something that really does well. Uh, since his offensive typing is fairly well overall, even though his attack set is not as scary, it able to get more defensive and hurt something with acrobatics is something to really, really be scared of. And just overall sword stance and stuff like that really does make this Pokemon one of the primary threats this generation, which is awesome. Didn't see that one coming at all. Uh, Dragonite, I don't know why. Um, it was BLs, it doesn't matter, but. Dragonite have felt the same kind of issue as Zalamence has been doing for quite some time is that well, while it does make for a decent C user, there are other mods that do it better. There is a bit too slow, so the best Dragonite set I would say is the Bandit version with extreme speed and whatnot. But yeah, Dragonite is not a bad Pokemon on its own, so seeing it being moved over the edge, even though it still was BL, I find it really cool, even though, as stated, Maybe not the most viable Pokemon in the OU meta, that said, it's still a scary Pokemon to be dealing with. Uh, Manaphy, I mean, it's probably gonna move up and down. Uh, it's a Pokemon that barely made a cut, but Rain definitely does help with hydration and whatnot. And like I said, Rain is a big factor in OU at the moment and definitely hasn't been... People aren't using less Rain now, it's using even more Rain, and Kingdra is the response to that. If Kingdra made a cut, it is because Rain really, really is dominating that 
environment overall, and actually, Tabu Koko and Halucha usually support that rain team, so it makes sense. I'm very scared to see King drop there again. It is probably one of the few Pokemon who can be in you in two months ago, and now is OU. That's that's a leap <laughs> we're talking about. Uh, last one is Ninetales or Alolan Ninetales for me. The reason for Alolan Ninetales is not only because of Aurora Wheel, but also it's oh sorry, it's stopping rain with hail and freeze dry ruins so many Pokemon's in rain. Uh, or not in rain, but switching to rain, Pelipper dies, Swampert dies, Kingdra dies. There are so many few things that deal with a low night tails as well as it does with rain. And yeah, overall, it's a perfect Pokemon for this environment. While low night tails have gotten the cold shoulder by a lot of people, but not being as viable due to its lowered stats and you know not being offensively as capable as any other Pokemon. One real estate consideration here that. Its biggest flaw is its typing and is able to sort of sort it out with a Royal Wheel being all the one to set it up and also being away to bullet punch in OU is not a possible threat if you have Lele behind you. So there are so many factors to make well Alolan Ninetale is one of the scariest Pokemons in OU. Probably even more scary than it was in you you do to this very reason alone. It counters rain and it deals with offensive Pokemon in the rain with very few issues. So yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised one bit. Now Yu is a different beast on his own. Well, I'm just gonna state the obvious. Heracross and Mantine moved up. Uh, first of all, of course, Heracross was banned from our use. So that is to be expected. Mantine. Does fear. I, I don't know if we're gonna keep being Yu Yu. It's used a lot in RU though as a really good defogger, and overall, it does serve a very, very good role in uh, what do you call it? Sorry, <laughs> in Yu Yu too. Being a decent response to the water teams, it could thrive there, but also just overall, I mean, the stealth rockers in Yu Yu really don't want to deal with Mantine, so with Roost and whatnot, it does do fairly well. Now, the scary part here is everything that made Yu Yu. Uh, that is yet to be quick ban. I really thought a few of these would be. Uh, Yurashi is now UU. That's not gonna be great. That's gonna, that, that's gonna be gone though. Much like Manaphy, it's a ferocious threat. Scarf Ironhead, please. And just Stealth Rock overall. It's, it's just a Pokemon that does do really well here. Probably a bit too well. Um, it does have a few responses, such as, of course, it's both Steelix and uh, Aggron. May Aggron primarily can deal with it. But it also is dependent on the set. I mean, if it's a physical set, yeah, they check it. But if it's a special set, Yurashi can wear them down eventually. Um, Smurgle moving down, I, I don't know about that. Um, I mean, it doesn't do too well in OU. So it's worth keeping in mind, mainly because of the arena trap. Smurgle just is a Pokemon that could be locked into a very, very bad situation and can't get out. But yeah, I mean, overall... Um, Smurgle is not too good of a Pokemon as its own, but it definitely are teams defined to make Smurgle great. So it's whether or not those type of teams have been used a lot less in OU, basically. Uh, Mega Gardevoir. I mean, it's here because, let, let's face the obvious, Lele is a better Mega Gardevoir at the moment, and you know, the Pixel got nerfed. Yeah, M Mega Gardevoir might not be as well used or well rounded used. It doesn't mean it's bad. It, far from it, if anything. I think it has the same issues as Zayenshi at the moment. It just are not allowed to be as great as it was due to the arena trap. And primarily for Guard of World, of course, that Lele served the same role but can use an item. Mega Lodios. Mm, very surprised about this. This really gotta go, in my honest opinion. That is a broken man. Get that out of here, that filth. <laughs> I don't know why it has been used at all. I kind of feel it weirder than Mega Latias. Isn't here, or is this opposite? No, it's Mega Latias, not Mega Latios. I'm sorry, that's Mega Latias right there. Um, because of Latias being in UU primarily, I'm saying this wrong. I just told you this is why I don't make them unscripted, but yeah, overall, that thing gotta go. That's the short story of it. Get out of here. Uh, Nehalego to UU. I say finally to that. Nehelego is, you know, an excellent Stealth Rocks and Toxic Spiker. It has a very good special defense and decent special attack and very, 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 very low, very low defense. But overall, it's not a bad Pokemon. It definitely is not, but it definitely doesn't do justice in uh, OU. So I can definitely see that, you know, with the rain and whatnot, you know, it became impossible for it to even thrive there. 
One good thing though is that Nihilego might actually be very well suited for UU and definitely if the next contender by its side being Rolling Wash is staying in UU because they really just make for a decent call against one another and uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, Rotom Wash is probably gonna stay UU. For those who saw my Who Was Really Better episode, I did acknowledge that Rotom Wash has a lot of flaws. Uh, it's forced to serve a defensive role in the higher ladders, and as far as I'm aware, it's it's barely is able to do that. I heard that uh, you know if you keep even when you swamp it out of the way, there are the role that Rotom Wash is serving right now is actually a special defensive role that it barely is able or capable of doing, mainly because of such a flaw, kind of, for example, for Magirna, really does ruin and use Tabu Koku, Lele really just damage it overall, uh, Bulu just one-shots his mono, and it just, it, it's a nightmare for it, and that's why it's fault. Now, in Yuju, I don't believe it has too bad of an issue. If anything, this type, type of combination is, well, it has been long and to be reused here, so I'll look forward to see it in Yu I think it's going to be a very, very good Pokemon overall here. And definitely a decent response to Gliscor, which is dominated at the moment. Very fun to see Gliscor being pushed by the edge by Rotom again, because in, like I said here, in um, in OU it barely shakes Lando, if anything. But it definitely shakes Gliscor, barring of course possible Toxic. And uh, Mega Ampharos is now Yu Yu. It's supposed to be, but due to the tier shift here, I'm not sure it's staying. I hope it does, but I mean, Mega Ampharos has it a lot rougher this gen, so it could very well fall to RU. It is still a good Pokemon overall, it's a very good slow Volt Switcher, and just overall, the bulk is right there. Uh, what is the issue with it is its slow speed, and uh, it can push it to very tough situations. And consider how the metagame has been transpiring yet again, it, it's whether or not Mega Ampharos can keep a candle. That said, it is bulk enough to soak it, so who knows, it actually might just do fine here, and I'm being just a bit anxious whether or not its viability is that high, because we have Mega Altaria on the tier 2, what? <laughs> I do believe Mega Altaria did fall to UU and was banned in Generation 6, if I remember correctly. Altaria, all it needs here is Return and Earthquake and Dragon Dance, and it is fine. There is nothing dealing with Mega Altaria outside of possible Scarfers. So, yeah, I mean, I'm definitely seeing that Pokemon go. Um, I don't know what else can be said. Mega Altaria is a tremendous threat in, uh, well, in UU. So, yeah, I'm really going to see that Pokemon go with anything. Same thing go with Mega Manetric. Mega Manetric 135 in its speed and can actually deal with Agron and Steelix, who can possibly stop Volt Switching with Overheat or a Flamethrower. Yeah, Manetric, if it stays, is going to be the number one threat, for sure, because outspeed even, of course, Mega, Mega Pidgeot, but I'm not sure whether or not it stays, but if it does, it's going to be the number one viable Pokemon, because this Pokemon deals with almost everything in a tier just fine. And I'm really glad to see Nihilego, Rotom Wash, and Manetric in the tier because they really can do well with one another, and I can't wait to use them. Now, in RU, as stated here, I don't know too much about RU at the moment, and all I can say is that see Moltres and Melilueta moving up. Yeah, they were BL before, so I get that. Machamp moving up, it really should. Um, the Guts facade history is just too much. The Guts or Flamer, I mean. Freaking monster. So we're probably gonna see Hiriyama serving the same role, which is gonna be just very interesting. It's gonna be incredible. I love it. Really looking forward to see that in action. That said though, I'm I'm not surprised that Machamp moved up because it's a tremendous threat. Um doing pretty much the same role as Kongelder did in UU, but without a possible drain punch recovery. Uh, Drapey moving up. I mean, what is Draping was a stature in Generation 5 and 6, even 4, I do believe, in RU. Move down to NU has been very viable in NU because it's a physical threat, very good Pursuit Trapper. And uh, yeah, I mean, this movement doesn't, doesn't surprise me. It is just as viable really in RU as it is in NU. Uh, seeing it move up definitely says that it's used more often in RU than I suspected. And I stated, I don't play RU enough to really know to see the teams in mind. All I can say is that, you know, Slurpuff sweeps are still my thing there. 
so Drapion would not resolve that whatsoever anyway. Uh, Quags are moving up, yeah, because of the Slurpuffs for sure. Slurpuff and possible, you know, Sand Slash Aurora Veil is a combination that really does fry well there, but just overall, Quags are just mean that Pokemon can't necessarily set up, Durand can do the Sea, Hone Claw and whatnot. Uh, is whether or not how much they're affecting it, but quite frankly, Quags are moving down, moving away from NU. Really does result to that th this defensive shaking was needed in RU. Uh, the things moving down though are the, the three things that are surprising. Um, Mega camera moving down, yeah, for sure. It still is, as stated before, it's a freaking viable Pokemon OU, so it's moving down. It's unfortunate, but it doesn't mean it's bad. It's a freaking powerhouse no matter what. Mega Bayonet moving down, not surprised. Mega Bombs moving down, not surprised. Uh, should be stated though, it is whether or not Mega Bombasnog will move up again due to Ninetales moving up because Hail is still needed, um, or not needed, but it can be capitalized in Yuju for Aurora Veil. Uh, it's probably going to be the best sitter now that all the Ninetales is gone after all. Um, Nidal Queen moving down, um, I think it is, and uh, I wonder, it was moved up last time, so it might just barely make the cut. And it actually might be very needed now that both Gardevoir and uh, Mega Rose and of course Altair isn't here because it does sort of solve a more defensive role than Nidoking King and also deals well with Yurashi and Nihilego, so I can see Nidoking King move, or Queen moving up again. Um, the Sidui and RU, not, not very thrilled about that. The Spirit Shackle Toxic Set is something I don't want to see capitalized on RU. I don't know how viable this UI was in UU. All I know is that you know it did hurt stuff, but that issues with matchups. And I do I do believe those matchups was kind of resolved to some extent, but probably not enough for it to be viable. And this is why mainly reason is here. The same thing with Serena. I think Serena is a bad grass type overall. Terror Kick is a very good attack though, and Rapid Spin is always a good utility. But overall, I think Serena as being a soul grass type doesn't resolve more things than like, let's say shaming for example which i do believe are vastly superior and is actually used a lot less so zarina and down here it actually could free fall from there now this thing is like the spinning rolls are over and uh, while it does make for decent spinner in ru it is whether or not it's able to keep up with offensive pokemon here too doesn't help that of course the likes of the things that follows in ru are being a camera up uh, Mega Bomber Snow and Needle Queen, which definitely deals with it head on. Uh, so, this is to be seen basically. Now, in NU, there only one thing that moved up, but that was Scyther. Uh, it's probably gonna fall again, actually. Uh, Frostless and uh, Odino was added as they were dropped for an RU. Frostless is incredible in many ways with a very strong speed here and decent stabs, actually. It's definitely before it's using that. Outside of the spike set, it actually does make for a good life for Obsidian if you want to capitalize on that. With C move in mind, it actually does have a damage output that is to be seen. Mega Odino was in, in you last season, season, generation, and for very good reason. It's probably the worst Mega Pokemon in the game, and uh, it is due to its ability actually, because its stats distribution and its uh, just overall bulk is very good. Uh, the typing is fair, but as stated, the ability really doesn't add anything to the Pokemon and therefore make it worse than it really is. Uh, Archeops, PU, uh, or the things added in PU are Archeops, Quill of Fish, Medicham, and Mesprit. Mesprit is there because Yuxi is better. I don't know whether or not that's gonna be held in PU. Um, Medicham, I do believe Medicham is a bigger threat than Gallade, so I don't. I definitely don't see Medicham staying because Gallade ruined the tier. Medicham can definitely do the same. Uh, Quillfish, no. I mean, it's tremendous in NU. I don't know why it's used. I, I don't see how it's used that little because it's a freaking threat. I mean, I can see a few mods dealing with it, such of course Slowbro checking it defensively, but still, it's great. I, I don't understand it. And Archeops in PU. Oof. I mean, Archeops is a very, very dangerous Pokemon in the right hand, and it definitely can ruin teams. Though, um, one has to be aware about, of course, Archeops because they're defined and whatnot. I don't believe it stays PU because it's a menacing Pokemon. It's basically Ramper does with a speed tier, and that could be very, very tough for the whole tier. And with, you know, Continental Crush and whatnot, Archeops really, really does pose a threat in PU. I do look forward to see it, though. 
but I don't believe any of these four are gonna stay PU, mainly because they're just posed too much threat overall in the tier. So it would be a fair assumption to say that it's too much for the tier to handle and therefore, well, can't be there anymore. But yes, that were the tier changes and quite frankly, really looking forward to playing a bit of a showdown now that the tier change has been so vastly, but I really want to go into, of course, RU and definitely UU this time and seeing some of the lesser Mega Evolution and see if they can thrive or actually fall even further. Mega Ampharos is definitely the, my choice here and I really want to see this Pokemon in action and see whether or not it can be capitalized and be worked upon well. And also Rodent Wash does solve a few defensive issues for a lot of Pokemon down there. So yeah, overall, really cool tier change. Hoping not for too many quick bans, but if they do, there is for a reason. So that's it guys. Sorry for this very lengthy Pokemon video. A lot of changes that we're, we're talking about. What do you guys feel about the change? Are you guys seeing anything that I didn't see that really, really does stand out? If so, make sure to write it down below, and I'll of course read them as always. Uh, thank you for watching, of course, and well, I'll see you next video. Till then, take care.